Oh, oh, oh.
ministry tonight. I need your presence tonight. Come on, say it. I need your presence tonight. I need your touch tonight. Come and fill my heart. Come and change my life.
judging anybody but you know what it's because we love you that we want to extend that invitation is there any brave person that is in this room tonight that don't know the Lord that want to take this opportunity just raise your hands if there's anyone tonight is your night if there is anybody well looks like we're in a blessed place tonight if everybody here is saved let me hear you say amen. amen if you know Jesus loves you let me hear you say amen, amen. say Lord I love you because you first loved me hallelujah hallelujah I just want you to stay in this place right now and feel the love of God 
It's never too late, believe me. It is never too late. God knows who you are. God knows where you are. He sees the, str the struggles you've been having. If there's someone that's been sick, if there's someone that's been depressed, I want you to know tonight, grab hold to every ounce of faith you have and believe if you lost faith, if you've been discouraged, you've been disappointed, I know that hope deferred makes the heart sick. But when it is fulfilled, it is like a tree of life. I want you to know that God is able to answer that prayer, that thing you've been waiting for for a long time. You might think it's too late, but I'm here to tell you, believe again. Because God has not lost his power. He has not forgotten about you. Believe again. Anybody willing to believe again tonight? Do I have any believers in this house tonight? Do I have anyone who believes that God can do miracles tonight? Do I, do I have anybody who believes that God can heal tonight? Do I have anybody who believes that God answers prayers tonight? Hallelujah.
thank you. O King of glory, we give you all the glory. Let's put our hands together for the Lord. He's the King of kings and the Lord of Lord. Amen. Brother Laridge, we just want to thank you so much. You're definitely coming back next month. Let's put our hands together for our brother. Do you want him back? Yes, you'll be back here next month. Amen. Please take your seat. I want to thank you. Please have your seat. Please sit down. Sit down. Thank you. I want to thank you for coming to the 180. Tonight, I just want your undivided attention for just 10 to 15 minutes. And I would just, I mean, Brother Larry just hit the nail. And I wanted to share just a few words with you. It's a story. And I just want to share that with you tonight. I have my Bible with me right here. And I want to talk to you about the seven signs of the end time. And it's not a scary thing. Can I please have some volume on, on the monitors, please? And it, it, it is a beautiful thing. The seven signs of the end time is a beautiful thing. As a Christian, you want these things to happen. You're not supposed to pray against it. Oh, Lord, do not, please, no. You want these things to happen. And sign number one talks about birth pains will grow in intensity on a woman when she's given birth. A woman, birth pains on a woman will grow in intensity. And now this sign comes straight out of the teaching of Jesus in Matthew chapter 24. And it is also found in Mark 13 and Luke 21. And in this passage, Jesus said, there's going to be signs like birth pains on a woman when she's, going, when she's given birth, like never before. I'm not a woman. I have never given birth. And I'm sure that they go through some excruciating pains. But Jesus said at the, in, in the end time, that birth pain will grow in intensity. And he goes on saying, and you will see false prophets. You will see wars. You will see rumors of wars. You will see plagues, sicknesses, earthquakes. And when these signs come, Jesus said, start paying attention. Tell someone to start paying attention. Tell your neighbor, start paying attention. Jesus says, start paying attention. And when certain things happen in, in our society like COVID-19, that affected the whole entire world or a certain politician come into power, a lot of people will say, oh my God, this must be the sign of the end times. This must be the sign of the end times. And while I say th these things must happen, and while I will tell you that these things will happen, I am not sure that they are necessary, the signs. I, 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 I'm just not sure that they are the signs that Jesus is coming back soon. I'm not sure. I think this is the weakest sign of the seven reasons why Jesus will be coming soon. I have three reasons, but I think this is the weakest of them. And I believe it's not enough for us to hang our hats on. It is definitely not enough for us to believe in it. In Matthew chapter 24, Jesus is answering his followers, his disciples. Jesus is answering them. Let's have Matthew chapter 24 on the board, please. And Jesus said, and Jesus went out and departed from the temple. And his disciples came to him for to show him the building of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, there shall, not be, there shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. Next verse, please. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And, when, and what shall be the signs of thy coming? and of the end of the world. And Jesus answered and said unto them, take heed, someone say take heed. 
take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name saying, I am the Christ and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars, rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. Someone say the end is not yet. See, this is why I said it's not enough for us to hang our hats on. One, it says wars and rumors of wars. Reason two, it says Jesus is saying, don't be alarmed by these when you hear such things. When you hear wars, rumors of wars, plagues, sicknesses, do not be alarmed. For these things have been happening over 2,000 years. Wars, rumors of wars, sicknesses, plagues, they've been happening. It is nothing new under the sun. So Jesus is saying, if you hear such things, do not be alarmed, do not be afraid, do not be dismayed. For it's been happening over 2,000 years. That is why I believe these are not enough. These signs are not enough to be the signs of the end times. Amen. And it could be argued that they are increasing in intensity as the years go by. But it is certainly not something that is new. So while these things do need to take place, and it will increase in intensity till Jesus comes back, I am not sure that they are a great sign that Jesus is coming soon. What I think is a much better sign is sign number two. Sign number two is that Israel will become a nation. Israel will become a nation. And there's been promises that God will bring back Israel and that Israel will become and will come back to its former glory. That the Lord will reign from Mount Zion and Jerusalem will be reestablished as his capital city once again. There's been promises all over the Bible concerning such things. And could you believe the last time Israel was ever a nation? was 586 BC. That's when the Babylonians attack Israel and totally annihilate that city. They destroy Israel. Not even a stone could be found in that place. And until 1948, Israel was always ruled by someone else. Someone else always had an authority over Israel. They were never a nation of their own. They were never a people of their own. They couldn't think of their own. They couldn't do anything about them on their own. Someone always ruled them until 1948. Sign number three says, a massive number of Israelites will return to Israel. And this is all over in the Bible and it is most prominent in Deuteronomy chapter 31 to five. And if you're a Bible scholar here, you can check me out in Deuteronomy chapter one to five. And this is Moses in Deuteronomy. Moses is preparing his people. And he, and Moses is saying, people, a blessing and a curse is coming your way. Someone say a blessing. Someone say a blessing. If you hearken unto me, a blessing will overtake you, your family, your cattle, your sheep, everything about you will be blessed. But if you do not hearken unto me, thou shalt be cursed. And I will scatter you all across the four corners of the world, God said to the Israelites. This is God telling the Israelites that he will curse them and he will scatter them across the entire globe. And God said, but if you come back, I will bring you back to your former glory. In Deuteronomy chapter 31 to 5. God told Moses, if they disobey me, I will scatter them. In which he eventually did. They disobeyed. So God scattered them across the globe. The promise of God to Israel. If you read Isaiah chapter 11, 12, 43, 5, Isaiah 49, 12, and Ezekiel 20, 41 to 42 talks about the promise of God to Israel. About God bringing them back 
to the land full of milk and honey. About God bringing them back to their, the land of their fathers, the land of Isaac, the land of, land of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. And in 1948, can you believe that in 1948, over 3 million Israelites have made that journey to Jerusalem. And these are Bible prophecies literally coming to pass in our lifetime. In 1948, 3 million Israelites made that journey to Israel. And that was reason number 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. 1, 2, and 3. Reason number 4 talks about Israel will bloom. Now, I don't know about you if you've been to Israel. That place is a desolate place. It's a desert. Nothing grows in that place. So I, personally, if you ask me, I, I, don't, I don't get it as to why God chose such a land for such a people. Because it's a desert. But the Israelites are so brilliant to the fact that they discovered such an engineering technology called the drip irrigation. I don't know if you ever know what that is. It's about turning salt water into fresh water. And the next one is being able to turn just air into water. Drip irrigation. They've been able to, to farm on a desert, on a land where nothing grows. They've been able to turn it into a lush oasis. I don't know about you, but that is just God's promise is coming to pass. Amen. And would you believe that Israel now export about $25 billion worth of fruits and vegetation all around the world, all around the globe. From a desert, this is a sign that God said it is going to come. This is a sign that God said in his word that is going to come now happening in our lifetime. Bible prophecy fulfilled. The prophecy that Israel will bloom is literally taking place in Matthew chapter 24, 32 and 33, Zechariah 8, 12 and Amos 9, 11 to 15. And if you're a Bible scholar here, you can check me out on these passages. Reason number six, the gospel will be preached to the ends of the world. The gospel will be preached in the ends of the world. Matthew chapter 20, uh, 24, 14. So Jesus said, I am not coming back till the gospel hits every part of the globe. And you and I can argue that the gospel has been preached at every part of the world. We can sit here and argue and debate about it. But do you know that there's still 1.5 billion people who are considered unreachable in our community? There's still 1.5 billion people who are considered unreachable. They're not Christians that are in the world today. There's over 7 billion people on this planet and there's still 1.5 billion people who do not know Christ. In our city alone, Durham, we are over a million people. As I did my research, we're over a million. But if you add all the churches in Durham, we're not even 30,000 people. There's still a lot of work for us to do in this part of the city. But whether you argue that we are there or, or not, or almost there, the fact is that we have made such an immense progress. And what was not possible to just 12 disciples is within our reach today. And within the next 20 years, that gap will become even smaller. Sign number seven. The nations, you see, this is the sign that you need to pay attention to. It talks about nation will align against Israel. Nations will align against Israel. And this is found in Ezekiel chapter 38. It talks about an association of nations that will align themselves strictly against, against Israel. And one of this nation, if you, read, if you read Ezekiel chapter 38, talks about 
Gog and Magog. If you translate in it, in, in the New International Version, it talks about Gog is, is known as Rush. And what we know as Rush today translate as Russia. One of them is Russia. One of them also is Persia. The Bible talks about Persia. And what we know about today, Persia is modern day Iran. Persia is Iran today. And what do you know? The two key nations who will be who will, will be aligned against Israel are now allies in battle. Persia or Iran and Russia are allies in battle and in trade. So that means if Russia goes to war, Iran goes to war. And if Iran goes to war, Russia goes to war. Bible prophecy happening in our lifetime. Right now. Like I said, start paying attention to these things. There's over a million people living in Durham. And that's what the 180 is about. We have so much young people. People in their 30s, people in their 40s, 50s, who still are considered unreachable. Your neighbor is considered unreachable. Your co-worker is considered unreachable. You go to work, you laugh with them, but they don't know anything about Christ. And it's our, do, it's our job to, to reach out to these people. And so tonight, I want people who will say, we would like to partner with you. We would like to partner with you with the 180 to reach the 1.5. We would like to partner with you. We would like to be a part of this great ministry that is being birthed right in, right in front of our eyes. And if you would like to be part of this ministry, if you would like to be part of this movement, you can help us by serving your time, your energy. You can also help us with your substance. And so tonight we're asking that if you would like to partner with us in these areas, please see us. We'll have our team over here. See us after the service so we can work together to reach the 1.5. Someone say with the 1.5. The 1.5. You have to consider 1.5 billion people lost on the path to the golden hell. I don't know about you, but that touches my heart. Let us all stand. Let us all rise as we call the worship team.
You know, before I pray, there are people here that need a touch from the Lord. You know, God is using us to touch people. I have seen, and, and pastors here have seen people be healed from headaches, be healed from tension, be healed from all kinds of sickness and disease. But here's a time. Don't let this time pass you by. God wants to touch you. He gives us gifts. Amen. He equips us here. He even equips you here. But if you need a touch from God, don't be ashamed. God can touch you. God can do it right now. If you have a sickness in your body, if you have a pain, if you're going through something, is there anybody who is suffering with, with back pain here right now? Just, just slip your hand. Let me see. God is about to heal you. He's about to touch you. He's about to change your life. Is it okay if I pray for you? God is going to touch you. God is here. You know what? God can do exceedingly, abundantly, above all you can ask or think. He is real. Amen. We believe in Him. You know, we believe in Him for so many things, but He is also a healer. And God is going to touch you right now. God, I pray that you will touch my sister. Lord, I pray that you will touch my sister right now, that you will touch her from the crown of her head to the soles of her feet. I command the back pain to leave your body right now. There it goes. Did you feel a shift? You felt a shift. That's how real it is. I just want to pray. We are about to end because, you know, it's been long. So God bless each and every one of you. Lord Father, I pray that you will touch each and every one of us here. We thank you, Lord Father, for the ministries. We want to honor each and every pastor here, even each and every servant, every minister, and each and every one that's here today. We just want to thank you and praise you for all you have done for us, oh God, for the wonderful service. Lord, that we can come and we can enter into your uh, presence, oh God, and feel your glory and feel your peace and your love. We thank you. We praise you. We worship you. We love you, oh God. We pray as we about to go, oh God, Father, even for the food, Lord, that is prepared, Lord. We pray that you will bless it, oh God, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, God. And if there's anybody who, who still needs prayer, please come and see us. God wants to touch you. Don't be ashamed. God bless you. Thank you. Tonight before we go, we would like to take an offering unto the Lord. The word of God said, do not come before me empty handed. So, where are the ushers? We would like to, if you have an offering that you would like to give unto the Lord, we'll have our place over here. Um, we'll also have our online giving, which is showcased on the screen. If you would like to give them to us and you would like to bless us, please do so. Amen. Jordan. Sunday. So thank you for coming out. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Amen. Thank you, Jordan. And if you live in the area, 
You can worship with us on Sundays. You can worship with us. Our church is DMC, Dominion Miracle Center. So if you have no home service or no home church, please worship with us. We have a great worship team and a band here. And we would love to receive you. Amen. Let us bow our head in prayer. Father, we thank you. We thank you for tonight. We thank you for loving us through your heart. We thank you for giving us such grace. We thank you for giving us the ability to be here to worship you today. Father, who are we but ants in your presence? As we go home today, guide us, protect us. Let your unction be upon us. Let your spirit be upon us. Let your favor carry us throughout the week. That whatever we touch will flourish. That whatever we do will flourish. That everything about us, our families will flourish. Be thou glorified for you're the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Father, guide us. Be our peace. Be our shield. Protect our minds and our heart from the enemies. Therefore, we thank you. We give you all the glory in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Thank you for coming. May God bless you. You can go to the banquet hall. We have refreshments over there. Food waiting for you. Amen. And if you desire prayer, all our pastors will be here. Pastor Mike, come on. Thanks for you guys to take away and give to whoever that person may be. So thank you, Pastor Sam.